Okay, everybody, welcome uh, to episode two of the Talk Moto Show with Jeffro and Wobbs. Um, if you tuned into episode one, thank you so much. Um, this is going to be a continuation of that because we had so much to talk about with our guest, Mark Chamberlain, issue one. Yeah, it's got too one. much. You can't do it all in one hit. So No. And to be honest, Wobbs, I needed a toilet break at that point. So I'm Me glad we both wrapped did. it up there. Um, you know, getting old. All those kind of things. Anyway, enough about my prostrate and all those problems there. Let's get into talking about this. We, we are going out, obviously, on YouTube, so hopefully you're watching us on that. And remember, you can find us on Spotify and Apple. We're going to build this thing up, Wobs. We're going to get plan? more and more guests in, aren't we? We've, we've got we've, loads of people lined up. What we've have we been doing already between breaks? Working on Ringing, guests. emailing. And you've got Mark DeRuva, who's possibly going to be our European correspondent. Oh, on. yes. And Mark ain't scared. We're going to do it like a big... A big episode with him, and then like a, a an annual annual every week. Yeah, talk to him about the European scene. Denny Stevenson, I'm buttering up to do the same for the Americans. <laughs> Always good value. And we've got Denny. some really good names lined up. We have yeah. got some quality names. So, but no more quality than we got Mark Chamberlain. Let's talk him to about the old Motivation Days back in. You know, yes, let's have a back in the day episode. Let's let's get Mark on. So we we obviously spoke uh, first part episode one was very much about the the motocross the nation's commitment as team manager but we all know there's more to you than that because that's like that's that's towards the tail end of a motocross career if you want it's a career that's not that's not <laughs> oh, be around the, come on it that. is it is <laughs> how did it all start because i'm intrigued because obviously the family dynamic um i actually only first met you guys when i was you know racing british championships and gps i think Really, I, I only really properly got to know you guys when I started doing GPs because you was out doing, you know, the Motivision thing. But before we got to the Motivision, how, how did the whole connection with motocross start? Everybody's got a starting point. What was yours? Um, well, just dad, really. He was a uh, trials, sidecar trials rider. So he was a passenger for uh, Colin Domit and they won three British championships and one European championship. So Never know that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was today years old. Yes. Uh, yeah. Well, yes. Yeah, so he uh, yeah, so is more of a legend in my well, eyes he, than he ever was. Well, he had a he had an FIM gold medal, and we were at Stefan Everts's place during the video days, and um, Stefan was said, "Oh, look, this is my FIM gold medal," and we were like, "Yeah, yeah no, Dad's got one of them." <laughs> Way before you had one, <laughs> and he was he was like, "What?" So no, he had, and he, but he never talked about it. He never talked about it. We would we only found out basically because we went up into the attic. As young kids, bored, snapped off these motorbikes are on top of trophies, which were trials bikes. <laughs> oh, come down, sick. and we're in the garden, and Mum come out, and she's like, "What? What? Where do you get them from?" I was, "Oh, they were up in the attic. Like no one was using them, so we have snapped the bikes off, and we're using them as." And they were, yeah, but they were dad's some of dad's some oh of dad's trophies. Oh. But he didn't care. Like, oh, did he not? No, okay, no, so he was so like, he, he literally like that was. He would never speak about it, um, and that was as far as he was concerned. Like. That part of his life was that. And then when we were growing up, it was like, no, now it's about the family, the kids and what he was doing then. Like, he's always been like that. I bet he was secretly pleased Probably. that you snapped the trophy. Well, yeah, yeah, but then it was like, oh, they're keen. You yeah. know, they're keen. So. Yeah. I've got that. We're in. We're in. <laughs> got to pass it, but pass the missus, but we're in. We're back in the game. Exactly. Exactly. And then it went from there to, to like, you know, yeah, we had bikes. Um, I had a Pee Wee 50 and... Um, was riding around the garden in, in Cornwall, Blackwater, and um, someone had, one of dad's friends had the um, rope on the old back. You know, there's a little, little, yeah, little yeah, metal bit around the back yeah. holding yeah. one of them. And my mum's like freaking out. I was like three. And then she's, and then all of a sudden he's like, oh, he'll be fine. Let me go. Of course, straight into the wall, breeze block wall. My shin came up like double the size. Oh. My mum's like, he's never riding. That's my baby, yeah, yeah, my yeah, baby, sounds... he's never, he's never, <laughs> he's never riding a bike again. <laughs> but by that stage, Gareth and Justin were racing and then I was just following them around. And then we all raced as kids. But dad would like, he would have all three of us race. And then the following year, like not enough money. So we would then have a year off, race again. It's a little bit on off, um, you know, because of the expense of it at that, at that time. Oh, yeah, three boys racing, ain't so, you? No, and not who you decide who races? You, yeah. You either all go or you don't go. Well, well, exactly. what, was it like the classic, like you're, you're the youngest in the family, so was it like the classic with clothes back in those days? Where the hand-me-downs. The hand-me-downs. Were you always the last in line? Or did you did you play the, the youngest, I'm the cutest type yeah. thing? Well, it depends who you speak to. Gareth or Justin right. would say that I played the youngest bit. You know, I would say, oh, no, I got the hand-me-downs. Now, we we, were not, we weren't like that. When I say that, we weren't like, you know, we weren't hard up. 
But it was a little bit like if we all can't do it, none of us are doing it. No, that's so enough. we had to have a break. And then when we had that break, I think we were that bad, like that much of a pain in mum and dad's ass that dad was like, we're going racing next year, no matter what. Like, yeah, we're yeah, going yeah. racing. Just to occupy you. Yeah, like these boys are going to end up, of, end up in the local police station otherwise. Like, you know, we, well, need, to, cool, we need to keep them occupied. Yeah. The local police station is about 400 miles away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can run wild in Cornwall, can't you? You shouldn't have to worry down there. Yeah, it was good. It was good fun. We had a, we had a really good childhood um, from, from the racing side to just normal, you know, normally like, you know, the whole beach thing and Cornish life was, was good you know as kids so that's that's where your dad's originally from or yeah. your mum yeah dad both, and mum yeah. yeah both both from Cornwall so yeah, we're all a, a, yeah, effectively a Cornish family whereabouts um, well I was born in Truro and then we lived all around that sort of area like oh, sort nice. of yeah, and pa- grandparents at Falmouth so we'd spend a lot of time on the beach and different bits well it was great I love it and I love going back now there's yeah, always, yeah. but there's always been um, a, good, a great motocross scene in the southwest isn't there you know there has genuinely a lot of Races, well, certainly when I was growing up, happened down the southwest. Yeah, as, and I mean deep into Cornwall as well. well it's like, a good scene. Yeah, definitely. Well, dad and dad had you know he, at one time or another, like he helped Ian Betterson a little bit. He helped um, Andrew Gilbert a little yeah. bit. He helped Larry Kessel a little bit. Louis' dad. So like, there's that connection now. A lot of these kids, you know, the Jago family, and then a lot of these kids now are racing. You know, and then you've got this next generation coming up, which is really, really nice to see, you know, because it's, yeah, brings back memories and they're all all good people. Sibling rivalries, uh, I can't remember, so the age gap between you, did you ever um, have to race each other or was you always in different classes? Who's the oldest? G's the oldest. Yeah, G's the oldest, couple of years difference between them, Justin and then me, three years. So there's, there's a gap. I don't think they ever raced, like, until we got older um until we got older and done like mr thumbercross all together or something like that do you know what i mean or yeah, yeah the, we've never actually raced each other but that's a touchy subject that i was gonna just subject. i'm gonna get onto this because i've got two brothers um we're, we're a tight family you know um we are we i don't think we've ever had too many crosswords or whatever so i i look at, at the chamberlain brothers i i see a lot in our and you are incredibly tight as a, as a family yeah. you know you've got Obviously, the guy, your brother's involved with the motocross nation stuff as well, particularly G. You've got Justin occasionally coming along, couldn't make it this year, obviously, for reasons we already spoke about in episode one. But um, you seem to be really, really close, you know. So when it comes to like that, any kind of growing up together, you still, as tight as you are, you still want to turn, you still want to yeah, turn you want to be the ball, don't you? Don't. So, so did that ever, did that ever boil over? Did you ever roll around on the, Lounge floor fighting who was the oh, best. Oh yeah, no, definitely. Well, I think. Well, to be fair, again, you, you speak to the speaks to Justin and G. They would say, you know, they would they would normally give me a slap when I was younger, and then <laughs> Mum would tell them off. Um, but G and Justin had a fair few little goes at each other. I remember I was like a big enough gap where they'd want to punch me, but they didn't quite get there, yeah. so I could get away with it just about. <laughs> but no, we we have our times, and then even like last year we went Evo racing, and even though like we're you know we're old and we're sensible still that little bit of edge you know and looking at the lap times i'm like oh he's done me like it you know it's, yeah. it still hurts no matter how you try and say it, it doesn't matter we're here for fun i was like a few times like just like oh, I'm, I'm fuming <laughs> <laughs> you see like you seem to me anyway you know the, the most um I'm, I'm gonna say it most most aggressive out of the three of you would you agree with that me or, yeah uh, or do you, know, or am I not seeing a side of G no I don't know see so I haven't seen that side of G oh. yeah I don't know you would yeah ju- 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 Justin Justin can be Justin's quiet Justin's quiet but then watch out for the quiet then ones. yeah exactly then then he's the one who's he's definitely good. he can he can flip but yeah. then he, but then it we all got older you know like I remember seeing those two fight and G would literally just be pinning Justin down because he'd be thinking, I do not want to let him go. <laughs> and, and it would just be getting more and more mad the whole time. So, and a lot of the time I was just spectating. So yeah, no, it was good. We had, a, we had a good time. We we get on well, like all families, you yeah. have your ups and downs, you have your disagreements, but essentially like we're, we're there for each other. And um, yeah, no, they're. You never seen that way. It always seemed like you guys were all pretty tight. You know, oh, we are, yeah, 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 we are tight. Yeah. You're we're like we're a tight, good team, yeah. you know? No, good, definitely. But the motivation stuff was quality, you know, that, that you got to think back in the day, there was no internet, there was no nothing. They were the only way you could see them events. And to hear and to hear Eric, yeah, Cornwall voice interviewing well, people. I, t- I tell you how it how it started. Yeah, that, you know, you know Vest, Vesti, uh, who started a Pico. So yeah. Vesti was a trials rider. So that's how Dad and Vesti knew each other. Were good friends. And then Vesti's a friend of Vesti's come up with this idea of having a video 
magazine. Yeah. And and the guy and Vesti said, look, this is my friend. He's ne- he said he's not going to do it. It's just a, like a dream. He said, but Eric, you're the type of person who would just do it. And literally, we were in Cornwall. Oh, so somebody else was teed up to do it? No, no, not teed oh, up to it. Literally, it was just an idea. It's a why don't we? Why don't you have a magazine on a video rather than a magazine? Like, yeah. And Vesti said, "Look, Eric, I think you're the sort of guy who would do it." And Dad was thinking about it, and at that time, he was the car business he had was struggling. And literally, one day, he came to us and said, "Right, we're, we're moving to um, we're moving to Belgium, and and uh, we're going to start <laughs> we're going to start this video product we're going to start this video production company, and we're going to start making videos." Uh, and it, I was thirteen. Honestly, it, honestly, it was that black and that white. black and like, white. What? How did that come? What? You, you just at the dinner table? Yeah, and no, just he, yeah, he came, <laughs> yeah, he came in one Off night. Came in one night, and we said, "Look, this is what we're going to do. We're going to go. We're going to base ourselves here. Base ourselves in Belgium. We're going to go and film all the videos. We need to think of a name." And we were all sat around the. I'm intrigued. We're by all it, sat. I've always wanted to well, know who came so, up with a so name. So we're all sat around looking thinking tra- talking all sorts of different wow what would it be this and my mum is sat looking at the video collection we've got and do you remember rick johnson's motivation yeah so yeah. she looked and she's going moto motivation moto moto vision and we all looked at mum and was like that's it that's see, it. mums are great aren't they Never know. Just, come justin, up with that. justin i thought your mum was justin just... drew the first logo remember the one with the, yeah. the x like he was like yeah. 14 at the time he sketched out the motivision logo which is like characteristic type you know whatever because he's like mum very artistic yeah so you know he drew out the logo and and um and it was like okay that's it and like like literally all this happened in one night it was well it was like literally over a yeah, course like, of yeah, a couple yeah, of yeah, nights okay. and then we were thinking and then you think as a kid to begin with you're all excited and literally, one day it's like we come home from school, and all our stuff's outside. <laughs> Bailiffs have removed all the stuff from outside. Oh, Dad, not Dad, you're Dad, Dad's, not, Dad's <laughs> not said it. Dad's pre-warned us we're stuck. Going to do something different. We come home, everything's outside. Sorry, you've got X amount of time, and we're like, "What the hell's going on?" And then Dad gets home, and he's like, "Oh, sorry, he didn't tell Mum. <laughs> no, Mum didn't even know this was going. On. Sorry, sorry, Shield." <laughs> Part of his master plan. Pack up, pack up, we're going. We're like, what do you mean we're going? Like, we can, we'll just go. We've got friends and whatever, family. He's like, we'll be fine. We're all in the van, like, sobbing, driving out of Cornwall. Never. And that was it. That was the start of Motorvision. That I'm was... so glad now I've never asked them no, these I've questions never asked them. prior to this. <laughs> See, I thought your mum could just make a mean Cornish pasty. No. But here she is coming up with the name. There's far more, far more to mum than that. Yeah, and that was it. That's how we started. Literally, it was get in the van and go. And it was like, Bloody wow. hell. That's, that's proper. That, learn something new every day. That's how stuff really happens. Like, Imagine doing that now. Stories. Imagine me coming home now giving it uh, off to Belgium. Yeah. Oh, my Getting God. Getting all this stuff up together and, go, and Well, they going. don't, they don't, make, so, they don't so, make women like they do. You know what I mean? Mum was just like, okay, okay, come on, boys. Like, she's so calm. <laughs> like, she's so chilled. So did you she's go to so school chilled. in Belgium then? Or you, that was it? You were done with school? <sighs> that's so another, that's just, another that's story. So, yeah, because you was... Okay, so if Justin so, was 14, she, what, was you 12? I 12, was, 13? Yeah, I was 12, 13. Justin was 14, 15, something like that. You know, it's that sort of age group. She so. was 27. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be like, hitting you, Wobs. <laughs> like when you've got... Um, when, you, when you're younger, you know, and you sometimes people move and you've got to move school, but in the same country, at least, you know, this is... Like, there's no game plan here, is there? Like, you don't even know where he's going to stay. Well, we got, we got out there and then... Um, Got out there and then we, we I don't know, Dad had maybe been out there. I'm not really sure. And then we met like Johan Leuten really early on. And Johan introduced us to a friend of his called Marcel. And Marcel was such a nice guy. And he um he said, he said like, you know, well, I'll help you find a place and whatever else. So we found a place, rented a house. And then um literally mum and dad were like, right, okay, we need to go. We need to get you into school. And I was like, well, I don't know about that. You know, I'm thinking, what's going on? <laughs> And they show me around this local international school. It's like full of Americans, all uh, families working in Brussels or right. whatever, you know, probably yeah. diplomat kids and whatnot. And I was just like, no way. I said, I'm going, I'm going back to Cornwall. And mum was like, no, no, you're not. I said, no, no, I'm going to go back. I'm going to live with Granny Rose. I'm not, I'm not staying, going to school there. No way. Anyway, so we negotiated and that was the end of my school career <laughs> there and then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> negotiated. So, so, but the deal was, it was, so oh. my, my, my English, my English was mum correcting my, my, um, my reports on races. Cause as we got going, like we would TMX, yeah. TMX would pay us 150 quid for a report. So I'd write it out. And mum would then, mum would, would then go through and, and correct my English before we sent it in. 
And then dad would like, we'd go up to the, like the videos or we'd be going up to the tolls and it'd be like, right, that's Swiss francs. Like how much is that in pounds? You know, like 2.5 Swiss francs. Yeah, trying to work it to out. To the pound Belgian francs, 50 Belgian francs was a quid, you know, like it, all those things. That was, that was it. And we're selling videos and you go to like a French GP or a Swiss GP and you'd have people paying in francs, Swiss francs, French francs, Belgian francs. You know, whatever yeah. it is, Italian. Well, that's what a lot of Europe. people don't understand now. We used to travel around Europe and you have to have currencies for every different country yeah. you're in. And carnets and all that paperwork. Oh, it was such a bull now, ache compared to just what it like, is they now. They just pay on the phone everywhere. It's that they got it easy, I'm they telling don't, you. They Ralph don't, they don't had a know point, they're born. Didn't they? yeah. Back in the day, <laughs> it was <laughs> Ralph Venables. There's, a, there's an audience out there now going, who the fuck's Ralph Venables? He's <laughs> a football manager, one. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, there's an education of life. I mean, there you go right there. You can go to universities, colleges, but, no, you, you know, Justin, you, you probably just traveling just, around Justin at that and age. G were not happy because they had to see out. So Justin must have been 16 because they had to see out their school. Like, they literally just finished... And G had done his college thing. And there's me like going, well, I'm out. I'm done. Like, I'm done. They, they were like, wow, oh, that's not, that's not right. <laughs> no, but fair play. You got. But anyway, it is what it is, you know. Like, <laughs> no, like, might be, you know, you go, those sibling rivalries. So what's like, so when did it get got away? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Start, that must have been 1990 kind of. So 91, the beat, start of 91. So 1990, we would have been out looking for places, I guess, at the end of 1990. So then 91, we, we started, but it was so good because when we first started, because it, it was fresh and new, like we went to the manufacturers like, okay, so what can we do for uh, advertising on the videos? You know, like yeah. you guys are launching now and trying to find advertisers. Well, like w that's what we had to do. And dad went and met with Alec Wright and people like that and Roger Harvey and whatnot. And, but like the support was great. Like we had, we had bikes. So we had bikes as part of our deal that we were riding in Belgium all year rather than take the money, like we were like, oh yeah, like dad's like, right, I need to keep these boys under control. So we, we were practicing on a Wednesday. Oh, so he did basically film, a contra deal. With filming, yeah, a contra deal, then filming GPs at the weekend. So mixing with our heroes, riding during the week. It's probably the best two years of my life. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was amazing. It was absolutely like unreal. And we had like a lot of the British guys uh, come out and stay with us, like in between Grand Prix and whatnot. Like it, we would ask the guys if they needed a base to set base. So to where were you based? Where, what, Turnhout? Oh yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, right like Marshy, yeah, you were right Marshy and all them lot was yeah, around yeah, there. They, they yeah, yeah, So we had like Robbie came out and, and, Coop, and Coops came out yeah. and stayed, and like a few people came out and stayed with us during like in between. How the long races. did that last? Because I was in Turnhout in '94 with Billy Lyons. Two only two years, and then yeah. because we after a couple of years of Motorvision, we started getting some TV uh, contracts. So then we ended up having to move back to Horsham to get an, an edit suite oh, okay. because the bike back then you couldn't beam anything up. So the no. bike couriers would come to Horsham to the edit suite, get the tape and then literally ride it into London to then beam it up for the news channels. So like we were literally going, we would do a GP, drive all the way through the night back to Horsham and then we do the edit. So what's the connection to Horsham? How did that come about? Just because the edit suite. And okay. then after that, then my brother met his future wife. My other brother met his ex future wife. Oh, next minute we're like, we're, that we're in Horsham. That's it. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. We're, we're not moving anywhere. Next bit, there's, there's nieces, <laughs> nephews, and that's, that's it. Like, yeah. Yeah. Cornwall to Horsham. Cornwall to Horsham. Belgium, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. With a little hop, skip, and jump, Belgium in between. Yeah. But Belgium for me, I have a really fond memory. Yeah, Turnhout was like a centre, wasn't it? Because I mean, when I worked for Billy Lyles, we started off in Italy, then we ended up going back to Turnhout and get Hondas. And like, fuck, he was like royalty about yeah. that place. I mean, he used to go to like these like Billy Lyles fan club things, and they're all chanting. Oh, and I'm thinking, song. this is weird. Yeah, man. they do, don't they? Weird. They have proper fan clubs. Where oh, you, like, you yeah, go and to some bus little... fulls of. Some little, little um, town hall kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, I was just going to say, like yeah. a village hall or whatever. And they're they all, all sitting there with all the Billy Lars jackets. Oh, they, and, that. They, like, and then they'll get a bus to the race and things yeah, to support do, the yeah. riders. It was oh amazing. Oh my God, it was insane. But Billy, we actually rent. So the second year we lived in Belgium, we rented Billy's house. Yeah. So, and then literally, Billy was supposed to be moving out. We rented the house and Billy ended up on the couch for like four or five months. Literally, all of a sudden, it's like... You had Billy Lyles sat at the dinner table and he was one of my heroes before we yeah. started the videos. So I'm like, one minute we're in Cornwall and I've got two heroes and they're Billy Lyles and Jeff Leask. And next minute I'm having, Billy Lyles having dinner with us every night and he's like almost like my big brother all of a sudden. Yeah. I'm like, what is going on? Yeah, that's quite surreal, particularly how it came around because like you were comfortable, settled in Cornwall and then like I said, all of a sudden you're like, Billy we're was doing down this, to earth, bang, and then you... Billy was down oh, to earth. Yeah. I mean, I work with him. He's funny. I mean, down to earth, no, no edge on him whatsoever. Uh, he's he was such a nice God. guy. We've well, seen actually at Red Bud, the first Red Bud in uh, 2018, we've seen him and caught up and it was so nice to speak to him and see him again. It's, yeah, yeah it's we had good times.
So who, obviously your dad has set up the business, you got the name. What what happened from that point? Who, did your dad say, right, you're doing this, you're doing that, or, or did you did you feel like squabbling over who was going to get what gig yeah. within? I mean, Justin's a cameraman. And yeah, Justin, just, Justin and G went to camera college. They, like, you know, uh, done that. They went to camera college, it, college over short, there. In, now in the UK, just a short term, oh, like okay. a little short Once thing. you knew that you were doing and it. And then literally it was like, right, then it was up and running and get yeah. going. But Justin was, Justin's got that, again, because he's a bit artistic, had a natural eye for framing the, the, the shots and whatnot. And he would always get so mad with me and G because we weren't natural at it. We were just doing the best we could. Um, and he'd be like, "Oh, look, that is utter shit." And it's like, so, <laughs> "I'm sorry, Just. I'm sorry." But yeah, but it, yeah, it was good. It, Justin drove all of that. That the you know the editing, the camera work. Like he was the main hub around that time because he it came to him naturally. Yeah. And G would do most of the driving, um, and then I'd be doing the bits and pieces and running the cameras and microphones around, all, and then started filming later on once I could hold the camera up because yeah. things were so heavy back then. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. When I first started, I literally could hardly hold the bloody thing up. Yeah. But, you know, again, amazing times. Uh, well, as a family, to go and do that and to travel around. It must around cost a lot of money to go and set up because they're proper cameras you had. Yeah, no, it was, it was it a lot of dough. a lot of money. Yeah. A lot of dough, yeah. I mean, no, I just it was hard a load to make of money it, on this. Stuff. A lot of make, to make it work was really difficult back then. And, but we were getting there, slowly getting there as the TV contracts came in and then the video side and then we we're selling the rights to this country, to that country. You know, we, it was building. It takes a long time to build a business, as you guys know. Yeah. And it was building. And then Giuseppe comes in with Action Sport. Was that the name? Action Group. Action Group. Yeah. And literally it was like, zoom. Stop. Done. Oh, he, he just kiboshed yeah, the whole yeah, thing. He said was, you, could, you couldn't film. Yeah, we, he, they, he, he had the rights. He, he had the TV the rights and the video rights, everything in one go. And we literally, like, that was the year before. It was the first time we made money in, in eight and nine years. We made money the year before. Going into this year, all these contracts lined up thinking, we're going to have a good year. And then literally it was done. Ugh. That was it. As in the decision, you couldn't, there was no other alternative. You could, it's not like you could, did you, con, like, consider going to, and doing something in America or just concentrating on British stuff, I suppose well, the market we, wasn't we, in depth enough. We did, we did have the US rights at that stage, so we were selling the US videos, so we carried on selling. Um, yeah, because you, you were, just, what, the, what, the, what was the video? Pain, the crash video? Pain, we, you you which, guys did which that? Was, yeah, we made that. That was, yeah. yeah. That was, but we had a lot of the rights for the US stuff, so we could, we could do different things. It was good. We had, at one point, it was, going, it was going well. But that, funny enough, with that, like when Giuseppe said that was it, we had to stop. We first three grand prix we went anyway dad said no no we unless we have it in writing from the fim we're not stopping and i'm like oh so we the first races we had security guards chasing us literally and he's just like just keep going and like don't just we're running around people chase us oh it's Probably like people thinking they've stolen the equipment Probably. thinking come on dad like and anyway we had the letter finally and to be fair though the year after giuseppe then had us back to work alongside him because he said, look, you guys are like obviously so determined. And and after that, like there was definitely a, a mutual respect that dad earned from Giuseppe. Yeah. Like Giuseppe was like, these guys, they don't give up very easily. No. It was pioneering. I, I thought it was, you know, like we all we all bought the tapes. I've still got loads of But you know, you you experienced that whole nomadic driving from race to race lifestyle with everybody else. Yeah. So, you know, we were just in campsites, working on bikes. And just getting through it, really. Internationals in the week. Well, you all travel together all as well. All travel together. You? You know, and we, it was we spoke such a good about atmosphere, that. you know. Yeah, you would you go to, from place to place and you'd catch up and you'd go and do some social stuff together during the week. And then. But yeah, even it was like good. we'd do the start of the year in the States. Do you remember them? Yeah. Do you yeah, remember? yeah, priest. Yeah. Fuck. Ooh, do you remember? <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Oh, no. is, the, 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 yeah, do you remember we're trail stuff. riding out of a house in, in California when I was working for Robbie? We had a house and there was me, Paul Eddy, Dobber, you. Shirty, Mark McCann. Justin was there. Justin McBride, was yeah. there. And they, all the bikes were in the garage. I remember we left the door open one night. Four full factory bikes in the garage. <laughs> and somebody forgot to close the door. There must have been nine bikes in that double garage. I think that's because we and had too go, many beers in the hot tub. Oh, my God. <laughs> we used to order pizza direct to the hot tub. It was mint. And then direct to the hot tub. <laughs> I mean, the hot tub had its own address. It was eight. And then we Not used to ride the out of the garage and ride up the hill, end of the road, up into the hills. And I remember I was on Greg Albertine's full factory RM 250. Yeah. Just trail riding. Yeah, Wobs, yeah, Wobs let me ride Reynard's full, like, factory, full factory 125. I was like, are you sure, Wobs? Yeah, kid. Yeah, just go for it, kid. We'll be all right. Bits. I was like, mate. <laughs> oh, you've had a quality. proper time of it then. Oh, it was a fun time. You had that little purple helmet car. Oh, I yeah. Remember, remember it kept cutting out because we had revenue. You jammed it, well, no, you jammed it into park driving up the road. And then, yeah, and then it stopped. It cut out. We had to push it back. Yeah. Can you imagine um, 
Gosh. now looking back, if you'd have not, if you'd have just kept the camera rolling beyond racing, can you imagine oh. the stuff you would have had? Not that you'd been able to show any of it. No. Oh, to be fair, we've you, got we. Uh, uh, oh, here ju- we go. He's got some yeah, stuff. To be fair, Justin, I haven't. It's just Justin. Justin's got some stuff. Like, um, do you remember Roddy Brooks when yeah. he was yeah. working for MCN? And they all took his car out onto the that track, onto the uh, Eastie and all that. that and was they, was they, that Televera? They, no, no, that was I don't know what, exactly where it was. I, came I remember from, where he was. Murdered. I came I back from. The same I came back from Belgium, Belgium and like you they, let me rod his car. That was it. That well, was they'd it. They done the Poland. hydraulic. The hydraulic fluid was leaking yeah. out of it, and oh, we have got some. We've got some gold. Whether he still got it or not, I don't know. But we have got some good stuff somewhere. <laughs> I see it's made a bit of a, like now on social media. You, you've started the yeah, tr- Justin, Justin yeah has. Justin started to and push it through with with Gary Price he started to push a bit of stuff through so That's hopefully cool. he can get some yeah, stuff it's got to be because like you know you see what we do with the VMX the end there's a there's a, a call for that era people like it yeah it's the good old days yeah for our generation and you know you've got it all on tape so you should be able to do something with it yeah surely. no they're definitely starting to work it now so it's good it's, it's at that time where it's the right time to sort of start bringing stuff back but the Motorvision days were were great days because I had no responsibility either then. Do you know what I mean? It's like literally I was just a kid living the dream. Travelling like, around Europe. Yeah. like, like. I, had a, I, I remember I had a pit bike and I was riding up this little Yamaha bop, it was called, just this little twist and go know, thing. Yeah. So I rode up and I'm looking at this guy. I'm thinking, wow, it's Mike Healy. And I'm just stood looking at him. He's like, hey, little shit, <laughs> could I use your bike? And I was like, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's ridden round, comes back, the Fork seals are gone. <laughs> there's no oil in it. It's just oh. like, and and uh, Catherine Lacroix, she's her manager at the time. Yeah. If you ever met Catherine, yeah. she's, remember. She, she's like, Mike, what are you doing? You have wrecked his bike. Give him a jersey or so. And he's like, he's all right. It's little shit. And I from know. that point, Mike called me little shit for the next four or five years while yeah. he was in Europe. But we ended up hanging out, going to he his place, right, watching movies in his again. apartment and just... Just being mates because he's like a lonely soul, really. And we, yeah. and we had, yeah, again, with him, we had some really good times. Did that... Like living that as you got a little bit older, did that like rubber stamp your interest or wanting to be involved in the industry long term? Like, yeah, I've known nothing else really, I yeah, guess, because I mean, yeah, because yeah, it was such an early start. Like, I've you know, occasionally I've looked and thought about other stuff, and then but motocross, when I think that I'm done, it drags me back around, and then <laughs> something else <laughs> comes up. So, you know, you just got to keep. Which brings you up, which brings us up to what you're doing now, the, the, exactly. You can't right get now, away from it, it, basically. So, now you're doing the armor. Vision, armor vision, vision, yeah, yeah, which is basically like a clear film that sticks over your goggles. Yeah, you can wipe so it's with your a, hand. yeah, it's a smart film that sticks on the lens. Um, a mutual friend, Steve Dagger, introduced me to um, Nathan Desimont, who him and his dad come up with the idea, and he was struggling to get it to market. So we've had a meeting, and we we come together and we formed a company, and we changed the, the name and made a relaunch and different bits and pieces, and um, and we're working as a good team together to push the brand forward and we've we've come a long way you know like it's only a year yeah, everybody old everybody raves about it it's a weird thing it's i mean i was a goggle product. guy for a lot of years and i'm like you are it is such it a great to product. make any sense and it's, now with the tear-offs being banned yeah you know like back in the day i was at smith we were developing like biodegradable tear-offs it was like looking through a fucking milk bottle yeah awful, you know people are people are as you know you've got that natural skepticism because you're so used to the set things, but yeah. it's it's genuinely such a great product. I'm something I'm really proud of that the small team that we've got, Nathan, myself, and I've had help from my brothers, of course, you know, naturally, and and I'm really proud of what we're doing. So I'm hoping we can do good things with it. Between the end of Motor Vision, that then and sorry, where you, you are now, now, no, no, sorry. not at all. From where you ended with the filming, then obviously a little bit of hiatus as you sort of as a family uh, couldn't carry on filming, but then. Vision as a team popped up. Um, anybody that was gets it the involved. team first or the Grand Prix first? I can't remember. No, oh, the no team, you did the, the yeah, team, team yeah. first. Yeah. I mean, I went for a stage. I've of, got to say, the Isle of Wight GP was the best GP I've ever been to in my life. And I've been to a few. Yeah, that it, was the best. It race. was good. Well, to be fair, like Jeff was involved in the original crew yeah, the year before. Yeah, I'm taking and then, and then you get, so I credit where it's due for those well, guys. I won't take all credit. Well, I will take credit for. I, I am. I'm claiming that. Mate, that was absolutely... What a stroke of genius. That I threw that out there in a production meeting. What a stroke of genius. Um, Rob Bradley, who was obviously the first promoter, we all sat around a table in his office. He's like, right, we've got to do something different. What do we think? And of course, you know, like I like to think I have a joke once in a while. So just, I, I said it as a joke. I absolutely said it as a joke. I have a joke about strippers. I said, well, you just got to have a stripper tent, isn't it? It'd be brilliant. You know, as a throwaway comment. <laughs> and I distinctly remember him absolutely just looking down the entertainment and he just slapped the table with his hand and went, 
put that down. We're doing that. I was like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah. And obviously, naturally, when I when, were, when, when I went the second year, I was like, well, you can't change a good thing. No. So we had to we had to go with it oh, again. Was it was it was no, that was an experience. I'm not not yeah. I, you know, obviously, we lost money, and um, I learned a lot that weekend. I again, it's something I really you and me enjoyed. Both. When you're actually involved yeah. at that level, running an event at that level, and you get into the the, the money involved and and, oh. and the and the politics of it and uh, you I'm know, getting and I'm sponsor learning. endorsements Trust me, and all, I'm you're, now you're exactly yeah I'm learning yeah fast so it's about an eye opener yeah, yeah. but time. you took it on you know big as time. as promoter I mean that's huge yeah no I just I don't know again just a little can't help bit yourself. you can't help no yourself. a little bit like I think I'm learning yeah I definitely I'm getting a little bit more chilled as I get older and I'm thinking about things yeah you know, again dad's oh sleep on it sleep on it don't make such impulsive decisions. So I'm trying not to. I'm definitely a lot slower now, and I'm more on the handbrake than I used to be because I'm like, well, I can't keep can't keep going. I can't keep putting the family for it. To be fair, do you yeah. know what I mean? It's like it needs need to give it a rest. But then at the same time, we yeah, we're the the team. You probably have more jobs than me. Like I say, you've been the cameraman, then you've had the team. You've done the Grand Prix promotion. You've been importer distributor. Yeah, no, I know. It's it's just one Some of those big things. Brands as well. Yeah, no, we've so had a good time. Rules, like I said, we're all suckers for it. Aren't yeah, we? got to do something. It's hard to walk away when you love it so much. And we had some good years with the team. You know, it was you good. Had great, it was amazing. You had great, great years with the team. You had great a team. you had a front running team. Let's not kid ourselves. You know, like Leoc was always brilliant to watch. Yeah. Brought a lot to it. You know, and then obviously. What you did with like with Doogie, yeah. We had a good time um, with I, I remember Doogie. that day, uh, Cullen, wasn't Cullen. it? It was Cullen when he was the youngest ever winner of a British, British Championship. Yeah, that was a good moment. I thought is that he still was that not in Wales? No, no, Cullen. Oh, I thought it was, it was Cullen. A... No, Pontrillas. Yeah. He did he, a couple of years later when he rode for us. He won. He won the overall there. Yeah, um, on but a Suzuki. he took a race win. His first ever Sorry, race win. That's at, what I thought, it was yeah. just nice to see overall. He's not somebody two two. Oh yeah, two two. That was it. Two two. Sorry, yeah. What's he up to now? I haven't seen him for He's years. got a barber shop. Is it? Yeah, yeah. He's done a Mike Healy on it. He's gone, got a gone, full, gone full, full barber. barber. Yeah, so the team, and again, that's when I was, you know, sitting back or stood back and thinking, like, you know, I, I relate to those Chamberlain brothers. They they go for it. Yeah. Like, they're passionate. Nobody can have a go at your family. No, it came through in the team. It yeah. absolutely no, came we through loved, in the team. We, we did love it. We went on too long. We should have stopped. Should have stopped earlier. Because, you know, like, you do get rinsed with that. You know, like, the money, the time, the effort that goes in. Um, but you know, you, you've got to live and learn. And, um, I think, well, we had some, we had some great times and particularly with at GP level with, when we had Tannel and racing like for top spots and things, that was a real buzz and probably something I chased afterwards, if I'm honest. By you know? being slightly the underdog because you want a factory yeah. feud when, when you get in those oh, high air colons and you love, start putting it to Do you think it's like the same as a gambler? That. You think yeah. you're chasing the, that high all the time, Definitely. you're chasing that? Yeah, definitely. And that's, that's something you've got to try and keep in, you know, you've got to try to keep that in balance. Um, and something that when I was younger, I couldn't do, I couldn't keep that balance. It was just so full on that it was too, it was too much really. But anyway, you can't, like dad always says, crack on. You yeah. Know, so you can't look back, like look forward. But the memories of that though, as well, running the team, do you have any, um, the, the classic question people say about regrets all the time, but I don't think you don't strike me as a person that that does because you know it's like living living that moment and, and whatever you know yeah. like putting you, yourself in that in, and what you learn from maybe running a team and the mistakes made there re, they're relatable to say taking it into business with what you're doing now with Armour Vision. And, and I that, think that I think yeah I think my a, a good friend of mine Ryan Hamlin said to me recently he said so he said Imag imagine if you hadn't done the team. Um, where you'd be at financially. And then he said, oh, scrub that. He said, because what you're doing now is because of all the years and the connections you've made. And that is a true story because everyone we're dealing with now was either met through the race team, through working with Alpine Stars and Troy Lee or CI Sport, through uh, Motivision, even the video days. They are lifelong connections that yeah. are coming to fruition. Well, it's and like, you know, like you most know of the people you know, you've been in it 30 years. I mean, how long have we... Exactly. You know, since the mid nineties and like, it's the same, you know, all these people all this time and without using anybody, you, you to utilize the connections you have to make the best of the situation you're in. Yeah. And like Jeff Cernick on the phone just a minute ago before <laughs> yeah. we started, you know, because yeah. he's, you know, he's ringing up and want to talk about armor vision and he, you know, Davey Coombe's been in, have introduced, yeah, you're, introduced you're really me to people. Davey, aren't you? Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. We met early doors again at the nations with Jeff Cernick and, and, uh, and we've just been friends since then. And, like Dave Langram was designing for us before he went to America. 
So there's You're a still lot doing of, race work. There's a lot of yeah. There's a lot of interconnections going on over the years, and like you say, that's all part of it. And I went to Daytona Supercross, and Davey's like introducing me. Like, you need to meet this guy. Look at this. Look at this new armor vision thing. And like he doesn't have to do that. No, but it but, helps. It's, but we're, it really we're all helps. this industry is small. It is, and that's a key point in it. I think from the outside, people think. Oh, you know, it's this big thing, but actually the inner circle and everybody knows everybody. It's and, very and, and tight, yeah. Yeah, that, that makes a big difference. It's the old it's boys it, network, and it? it really well, it is. is. Yeah, whether yeah. you like it or not, it is. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. So, the, you know, the Armour Vision thing's going seemingly great. So beyond that, what, is there anything else? I mean, are you just solely focusing on on that? Are you still, as it stands, um, going to be <laughs> Team GB manager in this we Somebody assume says so. different. We hope so. Yeah, and I've I've taken on a like a temporary role at the moment with Troy Lee, um, helping them connect with dealers in the UK. Uh, again, that's nice because you know when I had my race team with Leot, we were in Troy Lee. You know, I used to bring in Troy Lee and to keep a connection with a company like that. And Troy's such a great guy, and and the the team over there. So again, it's that industry link and industry connection. That's why I think to myself, if I do ever think, well, I do something different, like realistically. You know, especially leaving score at 13. Yeah. Really, I think I need to stick to what I know, you know. Yeah. You've done all right for yourself. Good credit to you. Keep plugging away, innit? Keep yeah, plugging I was, away. again, like, going to sort of get towards wrapping up with that. Like, what, have you ever thought, have you ever considered at any point on that career line, that career path, thinking, I'm I'm out. I need to do something different. Has that ever entered your head for a prolonged period of time? No, not a prolonged period. Every you know, every now and then at the end of a motocross season, <laughs> I've, I've, I thought, oh, that's it. I can't do it anymore. And I tried getting out of the team one year. I was, I was like, right, I'm done. I said to G and dad and everyone, I said, I'm done. I'm not going again. And I, so I went away with some friends. We were going on holiday and I'm being dropped to the airport. And next minute I've got dad and G going, wow, the thing is, because we were stopping <laughs> with Suzuki, they said there's no deal. We have spoken to, um, we have spoken to uh, Harvey Beltram at Honda, Robbie's old yeah. mechanic who we knew back in yeah. the day, whatever there might be a deal there. And I said, no, no, honestly, I'm done. We need to pull the plug. No, I'm done. Anyway, I'm away on holiday. Thinking about then it. I get a mess, an email from a sponsor. We can do this. Then I get a message from my dad and Mattis Caro's got no deal and he loved Mattis. And I was like, oh, no, here we go again. I'm like, all right, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> I was like a week, a week away. And I was like, I'm in, let's go right, again. It's hard so, to get away from. Yeah, no, I'm not going to get away from it, am I? I've got no, no chance. No, you, no yeah, you're in, kid. You're in for life. You're absolutely in for life. Yeah. Um, as I said, so we're going to start. Well, let's sign off. I would like to sign off with, if we could, um, without delving into too much. And I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. All the years of like working and shooting with Motor Vision, what what is is there like a standout moment in the video years, like regards of a, a funny moment or something that you look back on fondly and go, well, there's obviously loads, but you know, is there? Is there any kind of like particular story? You mentioned the hot tub thing there. With I mean, I'm sure there's there's loads, but was there like a? Well, I'll say one year. Was there one year in particular where you thought, as a kid, like it just don't get better than this? Like this is this is this is this where is it's it, at. Yeah. I am living the dream. There's definitely there's definitely quite a few, but like uh, Everts Everts versus Albertine that year was quite emotionally draining because I was a Stefan fan. And to see the yo-yoing going on between them, um, and then Everts versus Tortelli, Tortelli. Yeah, because was one, it was that. so dramatic. You were like, you felt like you were in it the whole time, and like it was just at each event, you'd be thinking, who's going to get the upper hand? And it's t- at times like that, which were you know, I particularly amazing. like that. I'll tell you why, from a motor vision point of view, because I was racing the two fifty GPs that year, and I was quite happy because I'd get a bit of TV time on motor vision when they come around to lap me <laughs> <laughs> and i did i had probably more you know on motor vision my little moments oh there i am look they're coming they're coming to lap me so i particularly enjoyed that and you it guys was, being there that but i, could, I used to love that about that about tortelli that he used to bend the bars didn't he without crashing every God. every race they had to change the yeah. bars now, grip, grip if you bars. sat on the bars if you sat on a bike and tried to bend a pair of bars you couldn't he, do it in a million years, but and, and they would have to put on like four pairs of bars on a weekend because he just bend animal. and ride in. And I don't know how you do that without crashing. He is an animal. He was oh, so he physically strong in his top half. Um, I, I, can, dealt, I dealt with him for a few years on the goggles and then I did his helmet stuff. 
right at the end of his career and he's a gentleman. He's oh, absolutely. Such a nice guy. Saw him at the AX uh, Festival. Yeah, same. Yeah, yeah. I, took over, I took him over, took Tallulah over. And uh, Summer, my, my niece, and we um, got him to sign and sign some stuff for us. So it was, yeah, no, it's good. Good time. But he was then. He was so super chilled out. And yet the classic, the, the crash helmet went on and he was just a, oh, yeah, a beast. I remember at Fox Hill one year, uh, the, the far... Uh, hill the steeper the track arrangement was a bit different then they were jumping down the other side and there was this little preload bit before it and then and then um he was sort of he was the only one doing it jumping a little dip before it went down the hill he was preloading it mm. and in qualifying in practice i think it was qualifying he came past me and he he basically clipped the top you know like yeah, yeah, he was technical. Hit the top of, no, he was clearing it every other lap, but he, oh, got it, he, he didn't got it quite wrong. get it right and clipped the top. And I was the next rider behind him. And the last thing I saw when he went off that hill was just literally the back end was like up like that, like both legs up. off. And so I'm, I, I was thinking, oh, I'll tag in behind Tortelli, see if I can get at least a toe for two corners before he goes out of sight. <laughs> so I instantly kind of just rolled off the throttle because I thought there's going to be a yard cell at the bottom of this hill. Went over top. He's already coming up oh. like nothing had happened. Oh, like, yeah. not still on the pipe. I'm like, how? I mean, he was ever so fussy about that? stuff, you know, with, between his mechanics and most of the stuff I was doing. But once you give him what he wanted, he wasn't. He was. He wasn't being fussy for being a dick. He was fussy because he wanted that how he to wanted be, it. He, and once he got, once he got how he wanted, he was so easy to deal with. Yeah. Once you knew what he wanted, he was ace. Yeah, we like Seb. We're going to try and get him on the we'll show. Good time. Yeah, that'd be, oh, that'd be a great, great, times. great interview. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, I know this is our. This is going to be the norm with what we. With yeah, we're carrying on again. We we could talk and talk, and maybe that's what we have to do. We have to keep getting guests back on and doing it in segments. I I don't know, but um, um, it's been awesome. Yeah. to have you on, Mark. Pleasure. Thank uh, you very as much. As our first guest, no, and thanks, episode guys. two as well. Yeah, because we couldn't fit it all into one. Um, wish you all the very best with certainly the vets. Uh, not the vets. That's you. That's me. Um, and Dave. Motocross, yeah, and Dave. Motocross of nations. I hope that continues. I hope we can find some talent. Um, build up a big crowd yeah. for next year. Let's start. And we'll do now. the best we can to promote it because it's the proper event. It's proper do. Yeah. Let's get some people there. Let's get let's get the kids into it because it, it needs to be. It's a proper thing. Yeah. And great luck with Armour Vision because obviously that's a cool product. And anything yeah, else you're not doing, many you products can... that come along that are so new. No. It's not like it's not like another pair of boots, is it? Another pair of goggles. It's a proper thing. Keep yeah. it fresh and it's yeah. quite a quality brand. If we can keep it like that way, but it's been good. So yeah, it's thanks. Been good guys. run, isn't it? Yeah. yeah from, keep... from a Oh, yeah, the youngest of three from Cornwall. Yeah, no, done. not done yet. Not <laughs> done yet. Not done yet. <laughs> not done yet. It was not the quote, done yet. That's a, the sound bite if ever you've heard it. Well, that's been fun. Um, listen, we're gonna, as we said, we do more of these. I've got it in front of us here. Look, remember, if you want to get involved with the show, you need to email us at infotalkmoto at gmail.com. Um, this is episode one and two. We're on episode two as we speak right now. So if you like what you see. Um, We've got some sponsors lined up. But yes, if do. anybody wants to come on. Shoot us an email. We can send you the uh, packages, what we can do for you with product placements and bits and pieces. So um, we need to make it pay um, so we can pay the wages, pay for all this. Pay for the people that fucking behind the equipment that I you just can't bought. See, staring at us saying, keep it rolling, keep it rolling. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we need to keep it going. Yeah. And, and anybody else out there, we want to engage, obviously, with you, the public, on all sorts, like uh, topic, things you want us to uh, like ask guests, because we're going to start announcing guests prior to the shows. So you can go, oh, I know a good question for them. You know, let, let's get it rolling um, and build this thing. Me and Wobbs, we'd like to think we've been knocking about the industry long enough. I uh, as I so. said, a little uh, tip of the hat to the Moto days. Um, and that's where we're at. We want to sit here, chat. Maybe we don't, might actually start opening up some beers. Yeah, we have to do it early loose. today because Mark's got to go back. But yeah. normally I think we'd be three or four beers deep, which could get a bit more fun. That's all right for you because we're doing it at your place. I've got to find a way home. You've got a spare room? Yeah. That's cool then. Okay. Um, we're signing off there. Thanks for tuning in. Episode two uh, of the uh, Talk Moto show with me, Jeff Rowe, and this man, Wobbs. Mark, thanks again, mate. Thank you, mate. Thank and you. Uh, we'll see you for episode three. <laughs>